Hey friends, I wanted to make a really quick video on the whole New Zealand thing going on right now with the banning of semi-automatic firearms and whatnot. Let me point out a couple of things that are really not talked about much in the media, but I want to point them out. The differences between New Zealand and of course the United States. New Zealand is actually a unitary parliamentary democracy under a constitutional monarchy. A lot of people lose sight of the fact that New Zealand has never really gained any real independence from the United Kingdom. Queen Elizabeth II still has some kind of weird ties to New Zealand. They do not have a constitution, but they do have a Bill of Rights. Now, the Bill of Rights is still not like our Bill of Rights that is embedded in our constitution. Their Bill of Rights can be overturned uh, in Parliament with a simple majority. Uh, they don't have to ratify it with three-fifths of the states like the United States does. So it's very, very easy to change the laws within the country, the boundaries of New Zealand. Again, it doesn't go through this long, laborsome process, and rightfully so, process that we have in the United States. Again, going back to what they are, they are a, a dem democracy. They are not a republic like we are. Now, another glaring difference between our two countries is our gun laws. I think sometimes people make this really weird association that because we all speak English, that somehow or another our countries and our laws are the same. That is totally not the case. Let's talk about New Zealand's gun laws. They have gun owner licensing, registration, and background checks, and not just background checks on new guns, on all guns, including private sales. That would include the, quote, universal background checks that our politicians are constantly trying to hoodwink you on. They in New Zealand have actual universal background checks. In other words, private gun sales are outlawed over there. You cannot sell anything to a friend, a family member, a neighbor, or anything like that uh, without doing an actual background check through the federal government. And there's different classifications of gun licenses over there. Uh, for instance, uh, one particular class if you want to buy one of the guns, and we're not talking about the class E or whichever, they have you know different rankings. We're talking about a simple gun registration license. The authorities actually have to interview you and they can actually come to your house. In some cases, they're mandated that they go to your home and interview you at your home along with family members who live within the home. And they kind of have red flag gun laws, so to speak, uh, not on the books, but since they're not a republic like us and they don't have a Second Amendment, they can infringe upon people's Second Amendment rights, or I should say their gun rights, as much as they want to over there. Uh, there's actually a report that the guy who shot up the mosque, a friend or an associate, an acquaintance, uh, thought that he was not right in the head and actually reported him to local police and authorities. Uh, now, this is starting to sound like the Parkland murder, where authorities were notified and they actually had an unstable person that should not have owned guns and should have been under some kind of watch and nothing ever happened. So uh, let's see what else comes out of that. But again, they can infringe upon your rights over there because they do not have a legitimate con constitution like we do and they don't have a second amendment written into even their bill of rights like we do. You know, I, I, my heart hurts for the 50 people who lost their lives in New, New Zealand. Um, I can honestly say that I've never wanted to live in New Zealand. Uh, you don't hear people rushing to live in New Zealand. Uh, one thing that's a little bit ironic and, uh, you know, again, a, a huge stark difference between the United States and New Zealand is they have very strict immigration laws, very strict immigration laws. Try to immigrate to New Zealand and you tell me how easy it is. You hear no one over there talking about their immigration laws because everyone's afraid to. Again, they don't have a real constitution over there, nothing that has any real teeth to it. But this guy from Australia went over there and caused all this problem, all these problems over there. The thing that perplexes me about this is you have uh, Prime Minister Ardern over there who, they actually have a censorship chief, a censorship chief. Would you really expect that in a country like the United States? Imagine if we had, if, if Donald Trump appointed a, quote, censorship chief. Liberals' heads would immediately catch on fire. And it would be a chain reaction across the country if there was a censorship chief. Yet we are, we got politicians and liberals and anti-gun people in the United States saying that they want us to be more like New Zealand. 
<laughs> they want us to be more not like New Zealand, home of the censorship chief. But they have used this censorship chief's power to say that the 70-something page manifesto written by the guy who shot up this mosque, if anybody prints it, is found with it, they can be in prison for up to 14 years as a result of that. Yet we want to be more like New Zealand. You know, guys, we cannot cherry pick what we want to be more like in these countries any more than people can come here to the United States and cherry pick what they like or don't like about us and our Constitution. It's an all or nothing thing. You either go to that country, you live like that country in the way they're supposed to, and in the United States, you come here and live like you're supposed to. If you don't agree with our Constitution, leave. No one is forcing you to stay. I don't see anybody kicking the doors down in New Zealand to go live over there possibly because they have such crappy laws. Their gun laws suck. Their First Amendment laws suck. Their freedom of speech laws, I should say, they suck. This country of New Zealand has done everything that this guy actually wrote in his manifesto that he wanted to happen. He wanted knee-jerk reactions. He, he says this in his manifesto. I've read it. He wanted knee-jerk reactions as a result of his crime. He wanted to directly affect gun laws in New Zealand, which he has. They are actually uh, fulfilling his wishes. And he wanted to uh, disrupt the social argument, the social conversation about the Second Amendment in the United States, which he has. Everybody is basically immortalizing this guy. They're giving him everything he wanted. You know, we've got this hang up that we don't want to say the killer's name. We don't want to see the killer's face. We don't want to make him. Uh, 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 we don't want to make him famous. You made him famous, okay? He's already famous. You talking about him is not going to make him any less famous. One thing that does is that dehumanizes the whole situation and takes it away from being again humanized. So you took the person out of it. Now the only thing people have to focus on is the gun. You'll show the pictures of the gun and you'll talk about the gun all day long. So you've dehumanized the whole topic because you took the human element out of it. That's what we ought to be focusing on. We ought to be, able to be focusing on what made this guy crazy. Why was this nut bag, uh, why did he go off the deep end? How did he get to this point? Was it something that we should have noticed? You don't think that people throughout the world, let alone New Zealand, would like to better understand how this guy got like this? So maybe we can prevent it again? Do you honestly think that taking firearms out of the hands of honest law-abiding citizens is going to prevent something like this from happening again. There are two people who own guns, two types of people. There are good guys and there are bad guys. The good guys will never shoot up a mosque. The bad guys will shoot up a mosque, a church, a school, or anything like that. But guess what? They're not criminals until they commit a crime. So they can hide in this little category over here of good guys because they have yet to commit a crime. That doesn't mean you take this whole group over here and demonize them. You cannot disenfranchise an entire group of people, which there's way more of, because you're fearful of a small group of people who may do something wrong in the near future. Because when you mandate these, these gun confiscations that will happen in New Zealand, you, again, you've got your good guys with the guns here and your bad guys with the guns here. These guys will abide by the law because they're gun owners. These guys will not. All you would do is render these guys completely helpless and these guys even more powerful. You have done nothing to stop the next mass killing.